Hmm, 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 hmm. Strike while the iron is hot, right? Is that the philosophy that you can bring up here? When it comes to the Vancouver Canucks, as we had talked about in the past two days, they are an absolute wagon. We had talked about this yesterday, but with the forward core that the team has, you could very well say that this is the deepest forward core the Vancouver Canucks have had to start out a season in decades, even surpassing that 2011 team. You take a look at the top end talent, you talk about the Millers, the Pedersons, the Bessers, you take a look at the middle of the line talent, the Pia Suters, the Connor Garlands, the Dakota Joshuas, the Niels Hoglanders, you take a look at the bottom tier talent, Kiefer Sherwood, fantastic beast, and where to find him. He is such a good shooter, and he's got that dog in him. Daniel Sprung is a fantastic shooter as well. He does not have that dog in him, but he can score a lot more goals than most regular bottom six players can. The team is a wagon, and with extra additions made onto this lineup like Jake DeBrusque, Danton Heinen, Kiefer Sherwood, Daniel Sprung, and the like, it opens the door to the Vancouver Canucks potentially making some trades. And this has popped up around different parts of social media. You'll see this on Instagram comments, you'll see this on Reddit, and on Twitter especially. But with the Vancouver Canucks forward core being pretty much the way it is right now, where I don't think it would be wise for Vancouver to keep on adding extra forwards, and it puts them in a spot where they honestly might have a few too many forwards to use, the question now is should the team explore some sort of a trade. Even though we had talked about the team having a pretty deep forward core, their D core leaves a bit more to be desired. Tyler Myers being played as a top four right-handed D, while it's not the worst thing in the world, I don't think it would be ideal to have him as a number four. When you talk about Derek Forbord, Vinny Deharnay, Carson Soucy rounding out that bottom four, these guys are fine, but if there was an upgrade to be made, there probably is an upgrade that could improve the team. While goaltending, forward depth, and top-tier defensemen are strengths for the Vancouver Canucks, defensive depth, you could say, isn't really there. So, if the Canucks have a little bit too many guys in their forward depth at their disposal, could we see some sort of a move? Let's go over on dailyfaceoff.com and talk about the projected Vancouver Canucks lines heading into next season. We had talked about this and more yesterday, but here it is one more time. Hoaglander Miller Besser, DeBrusque Pedersen Sprong, Joshua Bluger Garland, Heinen Suter Sherwood. The thing about this lineup is that some of the names, of course, they're kind of scrambled around there. Niels Hoaglander will probably play with Pedersen. Pia Suter could play with Miller and Besser. Danton Heinen could play in the fourth line center spot. Instead, Daniel Sprong could also be there. There are a lot of options that you could say would move some of these guys around, but this roster does not include Vasily Pod Colson nor does it include another name whom the Vancouver Canucks do have on their salary cap and, as a forward, is still pretty valuable on the team, Phil DiGiuseppe. They also signed Nathan Smith earlier on in the offseason, and he's a guy who will probably stay in the AHL. They have some other guys in the American Hockey League that, if they're good enough, could really force the Vancouver Canucks at giving them shots at the NHL level. I'm thinking of guys like Atu Ratu, Linus Carlson, Jonathan Lakaramaki. The roster that we had talked about up front, that doesn't even have Niels Oman on it. And so, with some of these guys that are not being played, you talk about Niels Oman, you talk about Vasily Podkolzin, you talk about Phil DiGiuseppe, you talk even about Niels Hoglander because he's been kind of rotating around this conversation as well. I've been seeing a lot of Canucks fans make the debates on social media as to whether or not a trade involving one of these guys is appropriate at this stage to say, hey, we have too many forwards that we can use. Why not trade some of the younger, more valuable ones to get a younger, more valuable right-handed D and lessen the load up on Tyler Myers and Vinny Deharnay in the process. The team also has Noah Juleson and Mark Friedman at their disposal on D as well. 
And I get it. You could say D is a lot more of a volatile position. There are injuries to be had because they're blocking shots and they're getting hit and all this stuff. So maybe it's appropriate to have more defensemen than needed at most times because you never know, right? Forwards, they're a lot more replaceable. There are a lot more that you use on a roster and there are a lot more that you have elsewhere chilling in your organization. So you could say that it's a little bit easier there. But for defense... Is there some sort of a Pod Colson or a Hoglander trade that could make this team better? And let's be real here. Nobody's talking about the idea of trading a Phil DiGiuseppe. Nobody's talking about trading a Niels Allman. Nobody's talking about trading a Linus Carlson. It's only Pods and Hawks. These guys were both 2019 players, first round caliber guys. I'd say caliber because Hoglander was taken in the second round of 2019 but was ranked to go in the first round. Vasily Podkolzin, though, was a first-round talent. It's just right now, you could say that even though Podkolzin has that dog in him, he doesn't really have the same offensive touch that Niels Hoglander has. Hoglander had a strange, uncanny ability to create everything out of nothing, especially at 5v5. All of his 20-plus goals in the season were even strength goals, which is nuts when you think about it. And now you're seeing some lineup projections having Hoglander not playing with Pedersen. Some are saying that PD should play with DeBrusque and Danton Heinen. PD plays with DeBrusque and somebody else. Daniel Sprong could be in there. If Hoglander is playing on the top line with Miller and Besser, honestly, I don't really think that fits all too well. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I do think that Miller Besser played a lot better with Pia Suter as their other guy instead of Niels Hoglander or anybody else, quite frankly, that rotated around in that spot. Keep the lines the best ways they were last season is my thought. But if Hoaglander is all of a sudden not breaking up that Pedersen, DeBrusque, whatever line, he's not finding a way to break onto Miller and Besser's line, he's not going to divorce Dakota Joshua, Connor Garland, if he finds himself in a fourth line role playing with Kiefer Sherwood and whomever it is is on fourth line center, do you think it's a little bit necessary to say, okay, maybe we could just trade Hoaglander. He's got all this value. He had scored 20 plus even strength goals. We can put Phil DiGiuseppe in that fourth line role instead. We can put Facilipod Colson in that fourth line role instead. Or if you wanted to reverse it, you say Hoaglander plays with Pedersen. You have DeBrusque on that line too, and everybody else rounds itself out. If you keep the lines the way they're displayed on daily faceoff and you say, hey, Vasilipod Colson is not being played. Why don't we trade him away? Because he's still got some value from being a first round caliber prospect. If we trade away, let's say, Pod Colson and Tyler Myers for another right handed defenseman who is better than Tyler Myers, maybe that makes sense. Who really knows? The defense is still equaled at the same amount, but you would be replacing Tyler Myers with somebody else who's better on right-handed D, and you'll still have DeHarnay and Juleson waiting in the trenches. As for up front, if you're trading a guy that's not even using up any roster space, then okay, you're kind of coming out of the situation in a net positive for what is on the ice on your hockey team at the time. So there is a quandary, I think, that does exist when you consider the names that the Vancouver Canucks have rotating around available to them in their lineup here, especially on forward. I will say that this forward core is a lot better than the forward core that the team could have had where they would have been forced to put Phil Giuseppe and Niels Oman and bottom six rolls if he had Pod Colson in there too. Like, if there weren't the extra guys there to round out the top and middle to bottom sixes, then, I mean, look, this is kind of where you're starting to see the value. Kiefer Sherwood adds a really good identity to that third line. Resigning Dakota Joshua, bringing him back with Connor Garland and Teddy Bluger, fantastic. Top six guys? Yeah, there are top six guys here. Jake DeBrusque, fantastic. Daniel Sprong has top six caliber goal scoring, but is not a top six caliber player. And then you have Danton Heinen, who could pretty much play anywhere. There are so many good, talented pieces the team added on forward that I'm starting to get really excited for the season. Not that I wasn't before, but now I'm like, wow. This team has too many good forwards and available forwards to them that they could maybe try to make a trade. Who really knows? Do I see a Pod Colson or a Hoglander getting traded sometime in the next few days here? I'm not a betting man, but if I was, I'd probably say no. 
But if you do, then hey, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about this entire trade conversation? And what do you think the outcome is going to be for Rick Tockett and his forward lines heading into 2024-2025? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Show us 99. And bye.